<laughs> I'm just thinking about how I'm trying to explain, going to explain this to you. Uh, and i uh, scrunching my eyes up and gritting my teeth. This is involved. And it's not just involved in terms of the, the gameplay mechanics and things like that. It's, uh, uh, there's a lot of things to decide before you move a piece or conduct an action or facilitate the sequence of play segment resolutions and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> and uh, last video or last turn, I, I posted some stuff about the war actually getting started. And so we're in the second, I think it's called the second stage, the second stage of the first war turn. You know, the term was the war was activated in the first stage. And that uh, means that, you know, it's kind of uh, open slather on everything, including the, including air and naval and special ops and all the rest of it. So, so initially I thought, well, the first thing I can do is I can do some uh, special ops actions and it wouldn't be cool if I could capture this air base uh, or damage it significantly or whatever the case may be. And if I could capture it, you know, I can land uh, tra air transport troops in and then it's on like Donkey Kong and all that sort of fun stuff. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to go do that. Then I thought, well, hang on a second. Uh, maybe those uh, soft activities can be intercepted and it ends up that you know they really can't be intercepted and let's not worry about the why of that but what that before I resolved that that was the case it led me to thinking well before I do any of that I really need to soften up all these other airfields and see if I can damage or mitigate the the response capability of the Turkish Air Force so I started looking at the map and I'm going okay well, where are all the bad guys what packages of mine can get to those locations and which locations can respond to the areas that I want to hit. Hmm. Well, what areas do I want to hit? Okay, so I, uh, I wanted to hit uh, this airfield here because it has uh, interceptors in it. There's an airfield here. Uh, there were some other forces further down this way, but I, you know, hey, they're out of range. So we didn't uh, look at those. Uh, we wanted to hit this airfield here because it had interceptors and, and one uh, uh, striker, ground striker in it. So you start looking, okay, well, where can I, what packages can I put together? And these guys have got to, you know, fly in. So as they fly in, uh, you've got to look at their flight path as they move from the strategic map over on the left-hand side. If you've watched any of the earlier videos, you'll see there's a little strategic map, which is basically equivalent to, you know, 10 hexes here. It's one of these hexagons that you can see faintly outlined. And then as they move in, well, no, there's a potential to detect. So who can detect? Well, over here was pretty straightforward. Obviously, where are my tweets? Just never mind. Obviously, uh, these, these dudes can detect because they're uh, anti-air. The HQ can detect uh, one hex out. These guys can detect one hex out. And then when stuff gets into the hex, they get another chance to detect. Though interestingly, if the enemy gets into the hex prior to being detected, a strike goes in first and then the response occurs. So very similar to Pacific War in that regard, I think. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, we wanted to hit this base as well. So I came in around. <laughs> And that means that there's only the air base got to uh, try and spot, which it did. These guys failed to spot prior to that. And uh, there you have it. And so then we conducted some air, uh, so immediately went to air to air. It was an escorted match, an escorted fight. So the escorters matched off and then the, uh, the strikers and, uh, and the other interceptors matched off against the strikers. Well, the way the rules read to me, uh, there's no detriment to the fighting capability of a ground strike aircraft. You're, you're using its anti-air capability as it's you know, written on the counter. So you go at it and have those, uh, those uh, resolutions, and then you, uh, you're resolving the, air, the intercept stuff as well, and everyone goes back to their box. And so the bunch of hits were laid out on everybody and all sorts of stuff happened. 
that took, you know, that took a fair while to get to that point. And I've since done it for this base here, and we've now conducted strikes on this base here and air-to-air -air, uh, activities here. And so what we're doing now is, uh, what are we doing here now? I don't think I can even remember, <laughs> but that's right. Uh, the ground strike rating of four and five, uh, we're going into, there's an air base here, that's it. This uh, Kutaya base here, we want to uh, try and degrade that uh, capability. So we roll an eight, which is greater than four, so no good. That goes back to the back to the base. Uh, then this guy rolled a three, which is two less than a five. So we go over to the, the little chart here. We start here and we go, look, oh, look, it's two less. And we scoot it across and we see that uh, it'd be two hits if it were air or naval, but it's one hit if it's ground. So we're going to inflict one hit on the base. And then you've got to put a marker up on the base and find it. I'm going to pop it down here for the time being. And yeah, I think what, actually, I think I recall what happened. Maybe it was not here, but I think it was. I think this guy died. This F6, F6 yes, this F6, F16 had two hits and he took uh, two more from the MiG. You know, you'll see the MiG's got a rating of seven uh, versus the six here. But this guy had already taken a hit from a special ops uh, attack, and then uh, one more for uh, a prior combat, and then he took two more, and so he was dead. So he goes off, off the board, and this MiG-31 goes back to base, this guy goes back to base, and this guy goes back to base. And that, that's, a, my friends, is a lot of work. Now, it's a lot of work, right? It's fun, it's interesting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to be struggling with here, I'm going to make sure I put these back on the right base. It's a little crowded. You know, these things are a little crowded over here. Uh, if I was going to redo that, I'd uh, make these these holding boxes on the left here bigger, and you know even these done locations bigger. Because it's nice to keep these aircraft set up in sort of pack, you know, strike packages and stuff like that, and uh, kind of go for it from there. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that is that is the opening portions of well, I don't know what time it is right now. Open portions, opening portions of uh, one of the three stages that we're going to go through for a full turn. We've already done one full stage. We're now doing the second full stage, which is now the war. You know, we're now in the war situation, and so uh, I've still got to move naval stuff. Obviously, if you know, if I if I had have been successful uh, capturing this base here, actually, I still haven't done this here yet. <laughs> I haven't conducted this operation here yet. If I'm success successful capturing that, then I've got to uh, fly in some uh, some troops. I also want to bring in these anti-sub forces. And once again, I was thinking, you know what? I don't I don't want to bring those in yet because. Uh, if they're spotted, which uh, technically they have been, I, I started bringing them in and they've been spotted, right? Uh, by these subs here at, you know, X range, whatever it was. Uh, the, it was over here somewhere. Uh, they're, they're now uh, susceptible to anti-air uh, anti and these are on ships. Ship to air to ship, air to naval uh, attacks. So I'm not sure that I want to do that yet. I also could intercept with the subs, maybe. I could look at the ranges and stuff and check that out and make sure that's even possible. But uh, I think, I think if, they're, if you're within a hex, you can do that. These guys, have got to, these guys are close enough now that they can launch. But what we want to do is make sure that uh, the air is relatively clear around here before we go doing that sort of fun stuff. So lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. I, I got to say, while I, while I find this great fun and interesting, I am not sure I'm man and up enough to uh, be able to do the interplay here. This really is feeling very much like a two-person game, despite the fantastic narrative and all the rest of it. Uh, maybe I'd do this a little bit slower and try and take my time with it. I was expecting to try and crank through maybe two turns today. 
I'll be lucky to get through this one turn uh, in the next couple of hours, we'll see. Uh, maybe a beer will help, that might be an idea. All right, talk to you guys soon, all the best. By the way, it's a G and Strike and this is the big board and it's Kev and whatever and thanks for tuning in.